You'll turn your kids into drug addicts. You'll steal your son's girlfriend and make her your own. You Megan. are one of the biggest fathers I've Man. ever met in my life. Today, we explored the depths of controversy as we explore the lives of the most hated guests ever to grace the stage of the Steve Wilco Show. Find out why this cast of characters will forever live in infamy. Kelsey was devastated after she found out that her boyfriend, Alex, was cheating with about 20 different women he met online. Oh. But they stayed together, and she later became pregnant. Oh. That's when things got worse. Alice continued to cheat and became abusive. Oh. Now they're here for a DNA test, but Kelsey has had enough. And Alex wants a second chance. Take a look. Her story will leave you shocked, enraged, and inspired immediately. When you talk about him punching you, uh, being physically abusive, verbally abusive, and you know, as any father with you know a daughter at home, it it, it enrages me. Uh, but then, and then the other disturbing thing I hear in the tape is you say he's a good father. When he's with his daughter, he is amazing to her. That's nice. But That's it's easy to be great to your own mm -hmm. children, but how about the way you treat the mother of that child? Get ready to be moved by Kelsey's story. Witness her vulnerable strength and appreciate her power of resilience in the face of adversity. It all started when I became pregnant. Was he punching you when you were pregnant? No, he would never punch me when I was pregnant. But he would kick me, push me around, slap me. Okay, mm -hmm. I mean, you should not only not be in this relationship, he should be in jail. Mm -hmm. An abusive relationship is never worth it. Staying in it and hoping your partner will change makes things worse. There's very few guys that I just absolutely hate before they hit my stage. Um, and I don't like this guy. How could you do this to me? How you know could I've you changed, Kelsey. How could you treat me like Kelsey, crap? Kelsey, you know I've changed. It's how, been about a year since anything has happened. How do I know? You've abused me physically, mentally, emotionally. I care about you, and I care about myself, but I care about my daughter the most, and that's why I'm done, I left. As tensions rise and emotions run high, watch the confrontation between the couple and how Steve carefully intervenes. Because she doesn't deserve to see you treat me like you know, What I, I don't understand is, where did you learn to hit a woman? Where did you learn that from? To be honest, I never really learned to you, hit a woman. You just, this is a, a, a thing that's inside you, naturally. No, it's not. No, no, it's not. Would you punch me? I don't think that would be uh, necessary. You would probably think long and hard before hitting me. Prepare yourself for a powerful display of justice as Steve Wilkos unravels the layers of a grim tale, advocating for those who have no voice. But because it's a woman that probably is not gonna fight you back, then you feel empowered. And that's the only reason why you do it. And you know what you are? You're a bully, you're a coward. Here you are, you got this beautiful woman in front of you and you're this guy that you're worried about, oh, she put on some weight. I mean, what are you, perfect? No, sir, I just- Why do you I expect grew up, perfection then? I grew why up- Why do you expect perfection? Is there anything he could say to defend himself at this point or is he venturing on a lost cause? I grew up sports fanatic. I was, every jock deserves a slim, sexy girl in high school. You know, every, every jock deserves, you know, something that's worth their criteria. You want a slim girl, and she wants a guy with some brains and, and, and some courage. <laughs> you know what the next step you should take? This step, picking up the phone, 911. Next, we have this episode where empathetic discussions and brutal confrontations collide. In the past year, Jay Shanice has called the police on her boyfriend, Tim, over 15 times because of domestic violence. Tim admits to physically abusing Jay Shanice, but he says it's because she will not stop accusing him of cheating. Brace yourselves as we delve into an unsettling chapter of the show that unravels the depths of Tim's behavior, almost leading to a fatal outcome. The things that she says on the tape that, you know, body slammed her, you punched her, you kicked her, you did all this stuff, is that true? Yes, it is. Okay. And why did you do that? A lot of stress. I was in the middle of getting ready to go locked up for a year. The audience witnesses a battle of wills between Steve and Tim, a confrontation charged with raw emotions and a chilling confession. But is it worth it? So when your fist is connecting with her face, when your foot is connecting with her body, you think she feels the love? 
No. As the truth unfolds, it becomes painfully clear that Tim's rage has pushed him perilously close to the edge. But how does she feel about all of these? We're here to get help. We're here so we can move on and be better people. I've been trying to push you to be a better person, and the only thing you do is beat me down. Don't put your hands on me. Don't beat me. Don't punch me. Don't smack me. Don't, don't body slam me. Don't disrespect me. This gripping narrative forces us to question our understanding of human behavior and the consequences of unchecked anger. If you really loved this young woman, right? If you really loved her, you would leave her. No, because I can do better for her. And once she sees it, I can do better. What? How can you once do better? Once she sees no other drama, and how the stuff are going you going through. to do better for go her? Go home, get a job, stop putting my hands on her, and start communicating with her more. Steve is famous for his intense confrontations and no holds barred discussions, but not every guest deserves his words. What am I going to do someday when my daughter's your age and she's acting like you? I hope she don't. What am I going to do as a dad? She have a dad, so I'm pretty sure she won't act like this. I want to be your dad. Steve Wilkos' unyielding determination to expose the truth and offer help to those trapped in the cycle of abuse has kept us glued to our screens. I hate and love doing these shows. I hate doing them because I hate to see any young woman be abused, or any woman be abused for that fact. I love doing them because it gives me a chance to really do something good with my life, and that's to help somebody less fortunate than myself. This is a chilling reminder that even within the confines of a talk show, real life horrors come to light, prompting us to confront the uncomfortable realities within our society. I'm here for help. I want you to, if you like have the police at my house to get them out, I wanna get We'll them. make, we're gonna make some phone calls to make sure. Okay. Next, we witness a poignant moment as Steve Wilkos confronts Ruby, a man who shamelessly confesses to this. Baby. No. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I know that I'm a I have man. forgiven you, but I can't take it anymore. It would be you did I'm too sorry, much to you can't listen to me. I'm a changed man. I don't see I don't believe that. You did so much to me. Look at my face. All these scars on my face. Well, you, you cheated know, you know the from the beginning. From my past. To... In moments like these, it's tough to trust the repentance of these guests because they might be doing it for the cameras. But here's how Steve reacts. I mean, you hurt me so bad. You get so mad when you wrong. I catch you too many times. I just can't take it anymore. Like, And I loved you. I still do. You I... blessed me with a beautiful daughter. Please. Give me another chance. I can't be a different man. Where did where did you learn to uh, beat a woman like that? Nowhere. Like I'm would you hit would you hit me? No. But you would hit your wife, the mother of your child. You beat and you left scars on her face. Yeah, my wife. Yeah. As the cameras roll, we're transported to a decisive moment on the Steve Wilco show, which crystallizes why millions of viewers adore this remarkable host. I always say a guy like you should be with a guy like me. Because you'd be oh so sweet. It's, 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 I listen to this story that your wife tells me, and it sickens me. It sickens me that there's men like you in the world that would cause so much damage to somebody that's so good to you. She loves you. Yeah. And all she wants is a little respect. Brace yourself for an emotional roller coaster as we witness a true hero in action. How many women have you cheated on her with? Uh, since we've been married, about four women. Four women. Yeah. And you haven't even been married a year. When you were caving your fist into her face, what were you thinking? It's, um, it's like a reaction I did without thinking. It's like, it happened. I wasn't thinking straight. I mean, I've been through a lot. I don't care what you've been through. There is no excuse for you to hit a woman like that. Steve is not a fan of abusive partners and does not hide it even when they step on stage. He's never gonna stop. Is there anything that you want to say to him? Just want to tell him that I give him a lot of chances to change to the person that I wanted him to be. I have given you too many chances. I have given you a year and two months. I've given you a year and two months. A year and two months is not a week, it's not a month. A year and two months to change and you were still doing the same thing using excuses and that's no i can't do it anymore all i want to do i just want to be a mother to my to my baby
You don't want to miss this moment, as it once again proves that it's not merely a talk show. These are his results, right? No more of a worthless piece of paper has ever landed on my stage. With his unique and empathetic style, Steve compels Ruby to face the consequences of his actions. That paper there is worthless. It has no answers, it has no clues, it has no truth. Because you know everything already. You know that you cannot be with this man. Now that the test results are out of the way, here's what Steve does next. And with that, you can get the hell off my stage. If you think you've seen the guests you hate the most, you need to hear this guy's story. Amanda has heard rumors that her husband is a child molester and a peeping Tom. And she fears that it is true. You see, three years ago, Michael was arrested and charged with indecent exposure to a child. But due to a lack of evidence, the charges were dropped. Amanda has stood by her man for three years. But recently, two different women came forward accusing Michael of peeping through their window. Here we bring you an episode of Steve Wilco's show that will take you on a roller coaster ride through a marriage plagued by deception and betrayal. I want to make sure that he's not a child molester, mostly, because I have a five year old daughter, and if I find out that he's lying about that, I, I, I'm going to go crazy because I, I don't want her to grow up with a man like that. It all began when whispers of unsettling rumors reached Amanda's ears. Stories that accused her husband, Michael, of being a peeping Tom. But she has another issue to worry about. He was talking about he has a virtual family. He's he has a virtual family. wife and she wants him to play out some sexual stuff. Why does he have that when he has a real family and a real wife? That's what I asked him. I used to, I mean, I would, we was doing that together, but we, I was with his virtual wife on there. It was escape from reality, but I was with him on there. As her world shattered, Amanda embarked on a relentless quest for answers, determined to uncover the truth that could either save her marriage or tear it apart. Women have said, hey, this guy was looking through my bathroom window. Oh, this I haven't looked in anybody's bathroom window. Really, Why I haven't. I what about this child that said he was naked, he rubbed up on me? I never did that. Now, she I says, if you fail any of these lie detector tests. Little did she know that the tangled web of deceit she was about to unravel would push her to the edge of despair and make him one of the most hated guests in the history of the show. Do you want I to stay married to her? Well. Yes. You love her? I love her to death. You love her to death? I mean, I can tell you the truth. I cried in prison because I was scared that I would lose her and my you daughter. You went to prison? I went not to prison, but the jailhouse. It was not actually. prison, it was jail. Steve had to go with this gripping confrontation because he felt the lady deserved better and the guy wasn't worth it. When I first met him, it was like love at first sight. And he was not the same person then. What was he, he like then? It was sweet, caring, and I could tell you because he was actually working at the time. And right. The truth emerges as the Steve Wilco show steps in to confront Michael with Amanda's heart-wrenching suspicions. Since age of 18, have you had sexual contact with any other woman besides Amanda? He said no. Since age of 18, have you had sexual intercourse with any other woman besides Amanda? He said no. And to both those questions, he told the truth. <laughs> But when you think the truths of this scandal have finally been exposed, the lie detector tests enter the scene with a twist, injecting a riveting level of tension. Have you ever peeked through a neighbor's window for your own sexual gratification? You said no. Have you had cyber sex with women you've met over the internet? You said no. And to those two questions, you did not tell the truth. <laughs> Will Michael's true colors be revealed, or will he continue to hide behind a mask of lies? Brace yourselves for the moment of truth that holds their marriage in the balance. Have you ever inappropriately touched any child under the age of 16 years old? He said no. Have you ever exposed your private parts to a child under the age of 16 years old? He said no. And to those two questions, Michael did not tell the truth. <laughs> 